Welcome to Canines for America. My name is Ryan and this is Piper and today we're going to be working with the head halter. This is a game changer. Let's get started. I think a head halter is just an absolute fantastic way to keep your dog from pulling on a walk um, for training purposes, and there's uh, several reasons why, but the, the head halter that I you know, personally love to use is called a walk and train. Today I got Miss Piper that's gonna show me uh, and show you guys how we're gonna do that, how we're gonna dress her. And then I'm also just gonna use a simple three foot lead for this exercise and my beef stew meat. So I'm gonna use the food reward method. I'm gonna get my dog, I'm gonna introduce my dog to two different pieces of equipment that she hasn't um, seen before. And I'm gonna show you how we use that to keep your dog from pulling and be able to use it in a training uh, you know, scenario right here again in our controlled environment. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Piper, here. Ah, that's a good girl. All right, so I'm gonna bring Piper over. I'm gonna let her smell my gear, okay? I'm gonna let her take a look at it. That's a good girl, yeah. Take a look at my lead, right? Cyper, good girl. I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pay her for that. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna take my head halter, I'm gonna kinda open it up to where I have, you know, the opening is nice and wide. The, um, the hook for the lead is gonna be dangling at the bottom. And then what I want to do is I want to grab another piece of meat, okay? And I want to put the meat right here in her muzzle. Oh, good girl. Awesome job. Thank you. And then I'm just going to wrap it, the, the long part around the back of her ears, and I'm going to clip it in and praise her and say, good girl. The reason why I also like this head halter is it has an adjustment for when I'm out in public, if I'm using it and I know, hey, I got kind of a, uh, a dog that I have to work on her aggression with other dogs. I'm worried that she might use her mouth as I'm still working with this type of an animal. I can close it so the dog isn't able to, to open their mouth as wide um, to become a dangerous situation. But with Miss Piper, I'm gonna keep it nice and, and loose, nice and low. It's been added to her. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get her another paycheck and I'm gonna give her another paycheck, good girl. And then I'm gonna take my three foot lead and I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna lock it up. Good job, Piper, easy. The lead is always on the right side. Piper, eyes, see how I can just gently pull her right to me, good girl. There's nothing on her neck. There's no stress whatsoever on her neck. I have good control of Piper and I can go ahead and I can pay her. I can send Piper easy, let her smell the ground. You can see she's kind of getting used to it a little bit. Piper here, good girl. Foos, good girl. And I can have the head halter with the lead pulling her and all I'm doing is just controlling the front of, of Piper, her snout. Nothing again interfering with her neck. So I'm not pulling on her neck. I'm not trying to, you know, sometimes, you know, if people are trying to do their correction, if you're using the mechanical method, um, which, you know, you gotta stay tuned and watch our videos on how to use the mechanical method appropriately and safely with your canine without injuring him or her. This is a great tool where you don't even have to really start to get into the mechanical method as much. Right here, I completely have her eyes. I have my payment. If I wanna give her the down command or the off command, off. Good girl. Pay from the bottom up, right? Very easy. Now if I wanna do sit, sit, I can pull. If I'm just, I'm controlling her mouth. Because again, guys, if the dog is not looking at you, the dog is not listening to you. So if you're using kind of the other methods of a flat collar, um, a chain collar, a prong collar, anything around the dog's neck, it's very easy for Piper to look, say, off into that direction. But I'm over here and I'm trying to get her to look at me, but she's looking at a squirrel. She's looking at a distraction, some external stimuli that's, that's totally broken her from her training. So instead of me trying to correct and causing a negative behavioral reaction based off of her temperament, 
which could now start to unwind any positive training that I've been doing with Piper and start to take us down a negative rabbit hole. By using the head halter, I'm able to keep Piper's focus on me. I'm able to keep Piper safe. I'm able to not cause any injury to Piper. And once we start going on our walks, it's gonna be a great method because at the end of the day, if Piper's trying to pull ahead of me, what's gonna happen? If she starts to pull ahead of me, easy Piper, and I'm back here, well, the dog's gonna be constantly looking back at me. So it's gonna naturally make her just wanna walk right on my side in a nice heel position. I have this great three foot lead that I can shorten to almost a foot. Very controlled, have her by my heel, Heel Piper, good girl, good job. I got her eyes looking at me, I got her focus. Ah, nothing's on her neck, very controlled. Good girl, Foose, easy to bring her around. Good girl, Piper, awesome. The head halter is a beautiful, beautiful piece of equipment when working with your canines and developing the dog not to pull on a walk and for training basic, basic obedient commands. So actually, Piper's taken to this very, very well. So what I would love to do next, I wanna see her environmental threshold and how she does with this piece of equipment out in some uh, heavy external downtown uh, Marysville stimuli. So let's go check out how Piper does on that. You ready, Piper? You wanna try it out? Let's go. So here we are, we, we, we've switched things up, we're now in an external environment and we're going to be working with Piper with the head halter now out with extreme stimuli. Um, the big goal is to get Piper not to pull, to be able to walk in a controllable heel um, throughout downtown here. Uh, we want to be able to find some people to be able to walk by um, different individuals, not have her pull one direction or the other. Um, to, to show that both of us are very balanced in this environment and how together we can navigate the different obstacles that we're going to be faced with. You can see Piper's already got her head halter on. I showed you um, back, at the, uh, back at their house how we put that on effectively. But now we're kind of in a dangerous situation. And what I mean by that, in stage one that you saw, when we had the head halter on, if it accidentally slipped, now these head halters can slip off the dog if they get stimulated and they turn into a neurotic state. The head halter can very easily slip, and if that happens, you're gonna be holding basically your lead, the head halter, and now your dog's running into the middle of the, the, the road. That is a problem. So for a safety aspect, guys, what you can do is you can go ahead, since you've been training, um, maybe the contrastive method, the mechanical method, we put the chain on the dog. Now the chain is on the dog and then we're gonna connect it. We connect it to the head halter. So for whatever reason, if that situation occurs, and sometimes, and guys, when we're training and working with animals, we can't train for everything. There's always something that might catch us off, off a surprise, right? And the last thing I always say is I don't want it to happen on my watch. Can it happen? Yes, but can I take the appropriate steps to make sure it doesn't happen? That's what I'm trying to do. So I advise you guys, if now we're working on the head halter, out into the external environment with trucks going by, um, loud noises, etc. I have the chain. If this were to slip off, I will still have my dog safe. There's no way she can slip out of the chain at all, right? So it's a safety measure. I've shortened my three foot lead that we were talking about earlier um, in stage one. I've shortened it to, to a one foot. And then I also have my beef stew meat. So we're gonna be paying on the food method. All right, so now what we're doing is we're working the same method, but we're working with a long line. So before we had the dog completely at our heel, at our foos, walking extremely obedient, nice and casual. At no point was the canine pulling or trying to lead me. 
Now we've switched it up. We've gone to a 15 foot lead. And now what we want to see the dog do, because you have to train both. You have to be able to train your dog to walk by your side, but you also have to train your dog to walk independently and ahead of you. To be, especially if you're gonna get into search work, detection work, whatever it might be, protection, any other type of an advanced skill set, the dogs need to learn to be able to walk ahead of us, uh, to be checking everything out. So here, we're doing the same method. We're using a long line with Piper, and she's not pulling. She's not pulling whatsoever. Piper's very, very controlled. You don't see her, the same method, we got our chain, we have the head halter on, and Piper is still walking very independently, but very casually without a pull whatsoever. I can work on a lot of things with this. I can have Piper seats. I can now back up good seats. I'm working out in the environment. And right now my dog, if she really wants to, she can try to dart into the street. She can try to break obedience. Piper, here. I can bring her right into me. Grab the lead, good, here. I'll pay her, Piper Foose. Good foos, good foos. Piper seats, good seats. Wow, good seats. I'll gather my lead. Good seats, seats. Good seats. Good Piper. I can work at distance within my environment by using my long line. I got complete control of my canine, and also if anything should go awry, I have my safety put in place as well. Piper foos. Foos, good foos, I'll grab the lead. Good foos, seats. Wow, good job. Food method, and I'll pay. Piper off, good off. Remember pay from the ground, up. Good girl, okay, free. I can let her be free. Got complete control. Great way to use a long line in distraction in a different environment. And again, the dog is not pulling. Seats. Good. Good job. Good job. Uh, first, thank you to Miss Piper. Um, you know, Piper was a, is a mixed temperament dog. She's a rescue. Um, we got her at about 10 months of age. So she's done beautiful today. Um, absolutely fantastic. What you saw us working on in this environment, our stage two, is we were working on the head halter with her safety chain. But what we were able to accomplish is getting a dog not to pull. At no point was this dog pulling on her walks, whether it was in a controlled heel on a three foot lead that I was able to shorten down to a foot, or when we went with the long line. Now the long line is fantastic to be able to use in this type of environment, because you can get the dog about 15 feet ahead of you, right before you come to a light. The light changes uh, green for the opposite traffic to go, immediately Piper and I get to work on her obedience. I get to call the sit from 15 feet back. Piper goes into a beautiful sit. I come in with the food reward method. I pay her. I, I condition her with praise. And it's a great way to eventually transition from this to a 30 foot lead to no lead. That's how we eventually get a dog to be off leash. Once you start to see our off leash videos, this is how we start to achieve a dog being off lead, walking through downtown Marysville with not a lead on her, just like you and I are walking, very casually. We can get her to that point very easily, but we have to go through kind of the process and how we do that. So if you're having trouble at home, because your dog's pulling all the time. We showed you that one method in a previous video. This is method number two, the head halter. An absolute game changer because what the head halter allows you to be able to work on with your canine and the communication that you get to develop with your canine is absolutely priceless. So another great tool, we showed you a couple exercises. This is something that you can get out and start working on immediately and again, Beautiful night out to be walking with my canine. I switch the leads from the car. You go from short to long, short to long. No, no, you don't have to be so consistent and just always be on a short lead. Um, you don't have to, to have that mindset that I will never allow my dogs to walk ahead of me. I mean, what? We want our dogs to learn to be independent. We want our dogs to be able to be able to walk ahead of us when we ask them to. But at the same time, we want our dogs to be able to walk in a heel 
when we ask them to. Not all the time. I mean, think about it. If you had to go on a walk with somebody and at all times they told you, walk right next to my left hip. How much fun are you going to be having walking with that individual always on their left hip, right? We got to remember, the majority of the time, it's Piper's time. I'm just a human that's setting up the game, setting up an exercise to help further her development. So guys, the last thing, remember, go get yourself a head halter and add it to your bag of equipment. It is a priceless piece of equipment to have. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to click like and subscribe because that's the best way that you guys can help support this channel.